Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. The Outsider's Perspective with the Maestro and Corey L. How you feeling, sir? I'm good. Doing all right? Mm-hmm. It's good to be back. Yes, indeed. We got some uh, things to get into. So I guess we're going to start off first with the Grammys. We'll yeah. recap what happened because we did our predictions last episode. Mm-hmm. So I guess we'll come back, tell people were we right, were we wrong, what's happening. So I think for the most part, we were correct. Yes. I think we had a very good streak. So do you remember the with the predictions? I wish well, first we just have. how you feel about the show overall. Let's say that. Oh, I was I was bored. I was bored to tears. <laughs> but you know, it I will say it was one of the the better or the better ones. And you were bored to tears? And I was, was bored. I was bored to tears. But I have been bored to death before. Ah, so, so tears yeah. is better There's than a difference. Death. Okay. But um, overall, I mean, it was pretty well put together. Other than little like logistic things, where it's like you yeah, see they, cameramen and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because they had uh, Alicia Keys like hosting and presenting, and so yeah. they was always following her with the camera. It was a mess, but it was still put together well for the most part. Mm-hmm. Um, and then in terms of the winners, mm-hmm. I was right for most of them. I was um. Do you? I, I'm trying to remember what I said. I know I said for best rap album it was going to be Cardi. Yes, you so said that. Cardi did win. Mm-hmm. Um, I knew for best rap song Drake was going to get one of them. Whether it was going to be Sicko Mode or God's Plan, Drake was going to leave with one. And he got for God's Plan. Right. For was it song or performance? I think it was like it had to be the song. I like, I don't know. I think it was performance, and then I think. Uh, this is America got song. But yet, yeah, that song of the year yeah. and record of the year, which I also said yes, he was going to get. Yes, she did. So that's <laughs> that's about four for four right there. Yes. And then um, what else did I say? I said that none of the people we knew <laughs> were going to win album of the year. <laughs> yeah, you picked a random name. So I, I picked a random white woman. It wasn't the white woman I picked, oh, it wasn't. but it was a white woman. Absolutely. So I think I get half credit on yeah, that. Yeah, I'll give you partial, partial points for that. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. So, yeah, all, all in all, I was right. But I was wrong about P.J. Morton not getting anything. Yes, Remember, I skipped tied. over. Now, mind you, I'm not technically wrong because I skipped over best R&B traditional because I didn't care. Remember. But you also said, get out of here, P.J. You had no reason <laughs> even being up here. So. I did say he was going to leave <laughs> empty-handed. So I was I was wrong about that. So congratulations, my brother. But um, yeah, I was right, and any I'm satisfied. Fa- any favorite that. like moments at all? Anything stood out to you? Anybody performance was better than the rest? Cardi's performance, people seem to like. Travis had the cage and people jumping and climbing over stuff. Who was the lady that sung the joke? The one I was kind of like shitting on. Whoever that that lady was, because it was you know it was, it was countryed out like it usually yeah, yeah, is, yeah. but she was singing. So I that's the first thing that came to mind. Second thing that comes to mind is probably Cardi. Cardi, I think good. I think Cardi did you know well. Um, I'm trying to think if I remember anything else. Motown tribute thoughts. We don't acknowledge J-Lo. that. <laughs> No, we don't. How are you not going to acknowledge? We don't acknowledge um, I mean, she killed it, but it it just doesn't make sense. I mean, Leda Hathaway was sitting right there. Yeah, Janelle sure. Monae was sitting right there. Like I know she had already but performed, she performed but so did um, the Musgraves girl. She performed twice. That's true. She did a uh, um, a tribute to Dolly. <laughs> So Janelle couldn't do a Motown tribute? She could have. But that was my first time. We talked about it. But that was my first time really seeing her, like a live performance of her. Really? And yeah, Janelle Monet, we talked about it. Oh, and yeah. I was like, okay. Hmm. I didn't really. Like, I expected more from her. Oh, so you, how, you didn't like it? I mean, it was cool. But she, to me, she's always been like theatrical or. Like she's kind of like over the top, even just in like regular presentation Mm -hmm. and her videos and all that. So I was like, oh, live performance. She about to like go. I mean, she had. Then I saw it and I was like, all right. She had the vagina pants. (laughs) 
she that was in the over video. Time? That's over the top, right? <laughs> I guess, but I've seen it already. So that's I've seen shocking. the vagina pants. It's already. not shocking. The second time you see <laughs> vagina pants, the first time is all you get. Well, I, I liked her performance. It didn't come to mind when you asked me any highlights. Though. I mean, it was cool. It wasn't yeah. a bad performance. I just was expecting more from her, just because of. I guess her persona and what she gives off and it didn't match to me. I feel you. But anyway, the Motown tribute. I did you remember Neo was there? He was there. He was there. Remember like <laughs> that's right. He <laughs> Neo was He there. sat at the piano for thir- like for 3 seconds <laughs> and that's all I remember. And it was just J Lo for the rest of. It. I know um I remember they surprised me when they said his name. I was like, "Oh, cuz he's signed a uh to Universal Motown, I think. Oh, so makes perfect sense. Yeah, but he ain't getting no screen time. <laughs> nah, you're not. <laughs> yeah, but all in all, the Grammys were was whack. But it it it, it, it was what it was, and I'm I'm glad that I was right. <laughs> Alicia Keys, how she do uh, hosting? Like, how was she? Because at first we was like Alicia Keys hosting. Like, mm. did she do a good job? Was she? Should she have sat down? How you feel? I mean, she was cool. Um. Mm, oh yeah, I liked her performance too. I loved her performance. Yeah, <laughs> the double piano she had going on. So that that was cool, but um. Mm, I don't know how to feel about it. I don't have an answer for that. I'm kind of indifferent about it, about how she did as a host. Like, so I, she didn't do bad, but. It wasn't like mm. it was nothing memorable. Like I don't really remember much. I remember the first lady. Well, yeah, because she could barely talk because everybody was yelling. Yeah. So I thought that was that was pretty cool, but yeah, I have really no other comments on <laughs> Miss Beats. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Beats. <laughs> well, all right. <laughs> so we're gonna take a break. Sure. We we'll take a break and come back and get into uh, Jesse out here wilding. We gotta, we gotta address Jesse. Oh God! <laughs> Again, because for the past like two weeks, he's been under investigation. But By we'll us <laughs> and the police department now. Yes. But we'll yeah. talk about that. Later. <laughs> yeah. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen. It is the outsider's perspective. And now we are going to get into uh, Jesse Smollett. It's been like a three week, three week back and forth with his, with this guy. Uh, so first time we just reported that he had been attacked. We didn't really know much was going on. Further details ensue. Next week we get the details. There's a noose, bleach, and a lot of like three a.m. subway runs. A confusion. Nobody really understands what's going on. This week, uh, the police have released a statement basically saying, we think that nigga made this shit up. (laughs) We think this was, in their words, fabricated uh, the attacks and that he may have actually paid the people to attack him so he could have this story and he could arise triumphant as the gay Tupac. So... (laughs) You can't let that go. (laughs) So... (laughs) Now that we have this additional information, how do you feel? Because la- last week we we said it was some questionable activity, we said it was some holes. Now we have even more. How you feel? Well, 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 Jesse. Well, well, well. Would you look at this? Mm. Now, in post production, we don't show <laughs> all the things that I said. Was it last week? It was last week. Mm-hmm. I told you stuff more adding up. And you know me, I love I love Jesse. I love him. We all did. He didn't yes. have to do this for us to like him. But that nigga's going to jail. <laughs> I don't know. If that nigga <laughs> lied. <laughs> that nigga's going to prison. Okay. <laughs> or he he got to do something. Either he paying a fine. Like you can't just do that. What you is can't it? just like a false police report and like investigation time. So. Mm-hmm. Look, I ain't really got much to say because I said all I needed to say. Last week, so we go refer you all to what I said. You will play the clips from last week when I put it up on. I listen to my gut. When my gut tells me something is going on, I believe it. When I smell fish, 
Come on now. Yep. Come Tell on now. Truth, shame the devil. You damn right. right. Oh, <laughs> you're darn right. Yes. <laughs> so I don't think I've heard him make like a statement. Of course statement he hasn't. Yet, but of course he has. But he has to though. You can't let that sit out there like. How that. much you want to bet? He thought it was just gonna go away. Like, <laughs> he thought it was just gonna disappear. Mm-mm. Nope. I, I don't know, man. You going to jail? <laughs> He submitted that fake. What, uh, what is going on? <laughs> you are going to jail. Okay, <laughs> okay. He submitted that fake uh, call log or whatever. It was like maybe this is enough to make them leave me alone. Hmm. Nah, bro, it's not gonna work. Well, Sorry. <laughs> well, well, well. Oh um, well. Good luck. Good luck with that. We'll see how that yes. goes. But in other news, <laughs> <laughs> on a more positive note, we shall say. Mm-hmm. Uh. We're just a couple days past the 10 year anniversary for the legendary mixtape that was so far gone. Mm -hmm. And in honor of said mixtape, Drake made the whole thing in its original form, all samples included, available on all streaming platforms. Mm -hmm. A legendary day. Mm -hmm. How do we feel about the return of so far gone? What it has meant? What have these 10 years meant as Drake fans? What does that mean for this to be here right now? Honestly, listening to it, it made me reflect on really how important Drake is. A legend. <laughs> like, a legend out here. You know, you never really realize until people die. But just kind of looking back and like I remember where I was, how old I was when I heard So Far Gone for the first time. Mm-hmm. I think I was like 14, 15. And... It was like immediate. It was like, I hmm, I never heard this before. What, yeah, what is this? Yeah. And I liked it immediately. Like it was crazy. And my I found I remember because the mixtape came out in February, but I didn't know until June about anything like about him. So I think I heard one of the singles, like Best I Ever Had or something like that. And then came across the mixtape. I was like, wait. <laughs> This thing is great. Like, it's, there's so many of these. Like, he can so, do this again, right? And it's like that's another long, but I didn't, I didn't mind that one. I mean, of course, it's not like I loved every song on there, but I could play it all the way through. Like, I remember I would, you know, ride with it on. So it's just like I, I had to reflect on that, but I also had to reflect on just like the moments. Like, Drake has given us cultural moments every time. Drake drops a major project, it becomes the soundtrack to whatever you're going through in life at the time. Exactly. We always talk about if you're reading this, it's too late, right? That one for me is it. I remember my life at that point. Like I was I was dating. Uh what's the name? And <laughs> what's the name? <laughs> I don't want to put nobody business out. Names have been removed for the So we of- used to we used to play it in, you know, her car all the time. And then you had moved into your new spot mm-hmm. around that point. We listened to the project together. Yeah. Remember when um, uh, what's the joint called? Uh, riding through the six with my woes joint. But before we <laughs> even heard the song, we heard the beat. The beat remember that was it because he had like a short film out before he like dropped oh, yeah, it. He did release that, and the <laughs> beat came. I was like, "What in the hell is that?" <laughs> and then the song. I was like, "Look." That is the greatest Drake album to me. He was like, those Canadians, what the... (laughs) Yes. That, even though it's technically a mixtape, whatever, but... That was the album. That is the one for me. There's always this question about whether Drake has a classic album or not, and everybody talk about how Take Care is probably the one. To me, if you're reading this, it's too late, it's the one. If you're reading this, it's too late, it's definitely a classic, as far as I'm concerned. So far gone, classic. It came at a perfect time, too, because it was during a whole beef, uh... All that. He mm-hmm. had Hotline Bling out during that oh, point, man. too. Which was another song that. That wasn't even on the, like, it wasn't even <laughs> it on wasn't the mixtape. Like, it was, it was like just. a bonus or something like that, yeah. Those were special times. Special times. And he's still, he's still going. And he's like, still here. He, he bigger than he was Scorpion then. He just got not too long ago. Yeah. He's still here, 10 years later. So, so far gone made me reflect on how important he is. Thank you. Thank you, Trey. And you said you, you almost... You almost well, actually, you temporarily. I tweeted it. <laughs> placed him in your like all-time influences, and then I along with it. your father, yes, Michael, 
<laughs> and then he was removed. <laughs> he was removed. Why, why the temporary placement for s- such a legendary? Because there person? are still qualifications here. Okay, okay, what's the qualifications? Yes, you have to make great music. Yes, you have to have Check. a great, you know, business mind. Check. Yes, you have to be related to me. Yes, <laughs> I'm playing. I don't know. But still, <laughs> the only thing that's holding me up with Drake is his live performance. I feel like I'm pretty sure if me and you went to go see Drake live. We would have the greatest time. Absolutely. But I think it would be kind of like going to the club, but Drake was there. <laughs> but I'm not there to, like, like I've never seen Michael Jackson live, obviously. But you can clearly see by your television screen, the nigga was incredible. Yeah, he was killing it. He was killing it. I don't, I've never felt that way about Drake. I've always cringed with Drake, especially when he first started. Maybe he used to do that hand thing <laughs> all the time. Remember that? That used to irk my he fucking nerves. Coming so, into his yes. own at the time. But, um... That is the main reason, is because I don't ever want to see him live. How much live have you seen of him? I've seen quite a bit. Really? I yes. haven't seen much. And he's, I, I think he's improved, but I think he's improved just with his overall like production. Because production. seeing clips of that, uh, the Amigo, or yeah, yeah, Aubrey yeah. and the Three Amigo, mm-hmm. they got some right. going on. Like, and he does, he does speak well. Flying cars and all types yeah. of stuff going on. But I'm good. I need, I need more. I need choreography. I need a band. Oh I need all God. that. And Drake, don't give me that. Choreography from Drake. It's Drake on the stage. <laughs> so, I don't think we getting choreography from uh-uh. Aubrey. So, thank you. Thank you, Drake. Thank you. Well, regardless of that, you are on my list, sir. Mm-hmm. Legend. Mm-hmm. A legend of it. We thank you. And he's still here. So, we will see what he puts out next. There's yes. more music to come. Yes. Uh, but with that, we are going to take a break. And we shall be back. Oh, yeah. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen. So now we're gonna get into the latest thing with uh, Monique. Oh, Remember, God. this is a long while, while back. I thought I was done with her. <laughs> we asked for uh, she she asked for us to join her in solidarity and boycott Netflix for racial and gender bias. Um, which we mostly said, nah, we good. Mm-hmm. Uh, and as a result of everything that came from that, she said some more crazy stuff. She ended up telling Oprah and <laughs> Lee Daniels and Tyler Perry to, to if she had one to suck her dick. Uh, <laughs> mm. Which, of course, did not go over well with most people. Um, so now I guess she's on the like a redemption tour, I guess. <laughs> so she, I'm not sure what <laughs> what this is. But uh, no, she I went. Think rent is due. That's, that's what I think. That's very true. <laughs> well, go ahead. Check coming in when Oprah speak up, yeah. but uh, she was on Steve Harvey's talk show, and it was basically it seemed like to me Steve Harvey trying to like get her to understand like, look, this is what you did wrong. Even if you do have a valid point, there's certain ways to go about things. You don't just you don't just behave certain ways in certain fields because you'll get blackballed or called difficult and all this other stuff. And she didn't really seem to get i think what he was saying to me and she was just like nah because y'all agree with me but when i jumped out the window y'all didn't jump behind me and he was like yeah <laughs> why would i do that yeah i may agree with your message but i'm not telling oprah suck my dick like why would i do that <laughs> those right. are two completely separate mm-hmm. entities i'm not doing that so mm-hmm. um i don't know you you said that people were like coming at steve harvey about what he was saying i was kind of agreeing yeah but. he was talking to steve like he don't get it and he's pulling up old bernie mac interviews and stuff about steve it's only about money and all that kind of thing so i yeah people are upset with steve not everybody mm-hmm. but i don't understand it yeah i don't understand but what do you feel about Mo- monique and i guess what she's trying to do now or the apology tour or is is something good going to come out of this or what's we have two different conflicts now okay Okay. the first conflict i feel the same way about about the whole netflix boycott and her being all that being worth more and all all that kind of thing Mm -hmm. we've gone through this this is old news super duper old Mm -hmm. my opinion has not changed Mm -hmm. all right yes they you are probably worth more than what they offered I don't agree with that. But you want me to boycott because you think you're worth three million or twenty million instead of the five hundred thousand, and I'm supposed to boycott 
And mind you, even like Steve said, there was no call to action. What exactly am I supposed to do? Do I cancel my Netflix? Do I just not watch it for a few days? Like, do, do I only it? watch black movies? Like, <laughs> or only movies? Like, I don't. I don't get it. Yeah, what are we doing? So. That's how I feel about that. That's how I've always felt about okay. it. Now, it seems like there's another issue. It seems like her main issue with Steve is that he didn't publicly say that he understood her. He only yeah. said it private. That was for everybody, really. Right. So it seemed to me like she wanted it some type of apology because she had been fighting them and going, and they was going back and forth and all that kind of stuff. But as soon as Steve said, I, and it's, it's funny how he did it. He was like, look. I probably, <laughs> possibly should have <laughs> called you, right, mm. first before I said any of these things. Because apparently he said how he felt about how she's going about things wrong before she he even talked to her or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I think he said it on his radio so show. He, he apologized, basically. He was like, <laughs> even though he was like, <laughs> like I said, it's like, I probably, possibly could have. So I probably should have did that. But I didn't. So moving forward, so now, like, <laughs> this is where we are. Right. But it seemed like she kind of, I don't know, she seemed more receptive to the apology. But then he said something about, okay, these people have to apologize to you, but then you, you have, have to, to apologize, apologize to these people. She didn't really feel that. You can tell by all, like, all <laughs> over her face you won't really Which feel that. Which is fair. Like... Yeah. But I, I don't know what else to say to her. You know what I'm saying? It seems like now this is just between them. her and Oprah, yeah. And all because now it's now she's being blackballed, not just by Hollywood, but by us the too. Black people, right? So she mad at it. everybody. She mad at Hollywood <laughs> and black people, and she's just upset. All right. So maybe somebody can clarify some things to me because it seems to me that at least when I go on Twitter. Because Twitter is a is a different place. Yes. But when I go on Twitter, it seems as if people are kind of siding with Monique on this. And, you know, Steve, say that's what happens when women try to, I guess, speak up for them, you know, sales. Because they were talking like Steve was, like, talking over her. And it was like, no. They, was, they, they, was equally pretty, yeah, they were equally going in on it, on each other. But, um. She said she wanted to punch him in the mouth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and got so, up and tried to punch him in the mouth. But you know what? I think ultimately it was a good conversation. I didn't. I, I think they came away with some type of, I guess, plan of action about what they wanted to do next. But you and me, with the plan of action, to me, that felt like Steve. It felt like Steve saying, "Okay, this is what I'm. This is what I'm going to do to try to fix your situation." It seemed like that's what she kind of wanted in the first place. <laughs> it didn't seem like I'm Monique and I may have done something wrong so let me she don't think she did nothing wrong. for what i even when she told oprah and everybody else to suck her penis <laughs> she says she said it with love <laughs> and then steve was like <laughs> don't sound like love. <laughs> she don't think she wrong so i look i don't care anymore but hopefully they work all that stuff out that's that's how Corey l feels about it that's pure foolishness yes. monique been wilding yeah. And then I said that too because the whole thing was about her being like her being blackballed for being difficult. But from what I understand, she was redeemed as difficult way before this whole situation with uh pressures came along. People mm -hmm. been calling her difficult. Mm -hmm. So that's just on top you adding seems like you add more to the case against you than you are helping yourself. Mm -hmm. So Monique, you might wanna get with Steve and let him follow through with that plan. And look, whoever's um, watching, let us know if we're wilding or right, yeah, if we're being insensitive or we're not understanding cuz maybe I'm not getting it but I I don't know I'm not I'm she's she was clearly wrong in like a lot of in a lot of places and she need to get exactly what she wants us to do about her business affairs like I I, I don't I, I don't, don't know it. how we can help other people think you're not difficult to work with. I don't have no control over how you act on set like I have no control. <laughs> it sounds like you need to relax right. but that's just me. I don't know. Hmm. Uh, but uh, it's other controversy. Mm -hmm. We have uh, money, money Mayweather. Right. Floyd Mayweather, TMZ is always catching people on some foolishness. Mm -hmm. But they caught him like walking into the Gucci store. And they were like, hey, uh, you going to the Gucci store? 
<laughs> and he was like, "Yeah, you know where I'm about to go." <laughs> and he was like, "You might want to relax. Do you didn't see the, you didn't see the racist sweater situation with the black face." And he was like, "What situation? I have no idea what you are speaking of." <laughs> <laughs> and he proceeded to walk into to Gucci. Mm-hmm. And then they caught him coming out of Gucci because I guess they stayed there and waited for him to shop, which is weird. Yeah. But he came out with all these bags and he was like, look what I just bought from Gucci. Mm-hmm. And he was like, you sure you're not mad? You sure not? Well, not that you're mad, but you sure you're ready for the backlash because everybody is upset with Gucci right now. All the major black people and you in here shopping, spending all your money. And he was like, "Nah, I do what I want. It don't matter to me. I got it's my money. I'll spend it how I want to spend it. Then he started going into, but black lives do matter, and this is an issue, which kind of threw me. I was like, so what's the message in here? Mm -hmm. But he went into that. uh, Fast forward, after that happened, people upset. T.I. recorded a diss track towards him called Fuck Nigga, (laughs) (laughs) expressing as to why he disagreed with Floyd and everything that was going on. Mm -hmm. So how do we feel about Floyd? Still shopping at Gucci with this whole situation and just kind of everything else tied into that. This probably sounds bad. Uh oh. But this is a hard one for me. Okay. This is a really hard one for me. It's hard because I know how we think. And by mm. we, I mean black people. Yeah. Um, first of all, remember when I said, when I saw the picture. My first instinct was it was to. Real. <laughs> you thought it was fake. So. Right, I thought it was. I thought it was yeah. okay. Somebody was clearly trying to be funny, and then especially with everything that's been going on, after I found out that it was real, it was still kind of like, well, they're clearly doing this on purpose. They clearly did it so that people would talk about it. And I feel I don't know. I I feel like this whole boycott, especially with the boycott for three months. Okay, then after three months, then we're good now. Like, what? I don't, I don't get it. I don't get what that three month time restraint was. I. So I had to look deeper into this because I get it. I get where Ti is coming from. So uh, he was talking about how F- Floyd Mayweather basically has a history of not giving back. He has a history of just kind of like making all his money and only worrying about himself mm-hmm. and people that he's directly responsible for. Mm-hmm. And people like T.I. I feel like he has an obligation to specifically his community to give back to them. So mm-hmm. if you make, you know, some people that feel like, well, if you make this amount of money, you only need this amount of money to actually live, especially live the type of lifestyle that you live. So all this other stuff, which you you clearly don't need it, you can give it to someone who needs it and put it, you know, towards all that kind of thing. Yeah. So. Being that we just recently found out that I am Republican, You're not I have this. Stop. I I <laughs> took two tests. I'm torn on this whole concept. I'm torn on the whole concept of me working for the money that I make, right? Mm-hmm. So me having to go out and earn what I have, and after I get to a certain point, it somehow belongs to everyone else, and I'm somehow obligated. Like I don't feel like I'm obligated to give nobody shit. The only people I'm obligated to me is me and mine. I'm only obligated to people that I'm directly responsible for. Right? That's how I feel. But that's how I feel because I'm Republican. So it's just like a lot of <laughs> He's not Republican. <laughs> a lot of Repub- <laughs> a lot of people don't feel that, especially in our community. So I can't I can't be mad at Floyd for doing what he wants to do with his money. Now, maybe it's because I didn't feel no kind of way about it. Me seeing blackface and all that, all that kind of thing. I, I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying that it's anything, but I don't look at it and get angry. Like, I, I think it's just, it's kind of the same way. Like, I keep talking about Dave Chappelle and all the comedians that put on white face and all that kind of stuff. White people eat that shit up. They love it. They they want that, but it's like it's different because it's a different history, and we in this mode where we kind of like too, flipping. That's, that's comedy. Like, yeah, but we, Dave Chappelle doing a comedy skit versus Gucci releasing a sweater. I well, the whole blackface was established off of comedy. Like it was funny to white people yeah. to put on shoe polish and oh, so yeah. I I get the racist background. I understand it, but it's just like I'm I'm just not sure this is the right way to go about it. Is trying to 
bully somebody into doing what you feel like they need to do with their with their money. I just I don't know, and I think it also goes back to the whole like usually if I'm giving you a hard time if I'm shitting on you or you know whatever, you don't give me nothing back. I'm wasting my time. At the end of the day, I'm looking dumb because I'm out here trying to get a get a rise out of you. And you clearly don't care. But if I shit on you and I see that me shitting on you upset you because that's basically what I was trying to do anyway. I'm just keep doing it. And in a sense, I have power over you and your emotions. So it's like I I don't feel that way. I've never been the type of person. Like I grew up in Richmond and I grew up around a whole bunch of niggas that just soak you for no reason. Talk about everything that you, you know, wear, to talk about your hairline, everything. And it's just like this is how some people are and I keep it moving. And it's just got to a point where it's like, look, this is the Ecoy alone. Like, he don't care. So it's like it I just feel like people put too much power to get it I I don't want to say I don't want to say the more. What? But I <laughs> I understand I understand where people are coming from. I get where T.I. is coming from. It sounds kind of pandery a little bit to me. To T.I.? Yeah, t- to me. But well, him and Floyd Mayweather had beef prior anyway, so that's a little... Okay, so they got a little, more, side, <laughs> a little more history. Uh, Tiny and Tiny and uh, Floyd were seen in the cut one day, oh, and <laughs> T.I. came through swinging. So. But wasn't that after he cheated on, on her or something? So she was like trying to get... I think so. Yeah, yeah. so... So, yeah, that's they, they, have, they have other stuff yes. going on. <laughs> but I mean that's just that's just how I feel about it. We can make that a hot take if you if you'd like. I don't think it's a hot take because when we were talking about the other, you said you don't necessarily and I agree, I don't think anyone is obligated to do anything with their money other than like you said, if I got kids or like a family, a direct wife, my only like obligation is to take care of them. Now, if I have the the access funds to spend elsewhere me personally i would do some type of outreach or help the community or things like that just because i want to do that i agree because i care about those things right Right. so it's but i don't have to no you don't have to but you you said that you would want to yeah so it could be i guess I i don't know if that's a like a character trait like it shows the type of person you are or anything like that but I think there's something to say for that. Like me personally, I don't have a person that if I have in abundance, I feel like I I would give something back. That's just the type of person that I am. I would do that. So uh, I don't know how you would look at it, but it could be is that if someone had that and didn't, I mean, they're within their right, but I don't know. I feel like it's his, his money. You can do what you want with it. Yeah. And I also feel like part of that reason for him not giving back is because he's kind of going broke. Oh. I feel like. Oh. Floyd may I feel like a lot of people get rich and then like they want to live a lifestyle mm-hmm. and then the bills start coming in for the lifestyle in which they have created mm-hmm. <laughs> and then they like wait a minute how mm-hmm. and then they got start doing math so mm-hmm. it's like he don't, I don't I truly don't think he has the access to give like talk about it <laughs> to be fair you heard it here here so first that is folks I, take. I think Floyd going broke on the low Floyd Mayweather is going broke <laughs> You heard it here, folks. You heard it here first. Yes. Mm. I think he's going broke. Because I think he's been doing a lot of sketchy fights in the last mm. couple months to a year. Because, like, normally Floyd Mayweather would get, like, $100 million to fight one person. Mm-hmm. Like, he will make that much money in one night. Mm-hmm. Then he started taking random fights, fading for, like, this teenage Asian Filipino boy mm-hmm. for, like, a $1 million. And was mm-hmm. like... Why is Floyd Mayweather taking a one million dollar fight yeah. in another country where he can go to Vegas and get another fight? That sounds like somebody's stretched for money and a bill came in for a yacht or something, and he's like, ah, "I need this." You have a point. Who want to fight real quick? Mm-hmm. Like, nah, that's that seems suspect. So you I think point. niggas is scrambling for fun, so he can't really give. But because he's created that image, you look at his Instagram; it's just piles of money, and gold, and gold. And gold that was just standing yeah. there drinking from like. <laughs> <laughs> the gauntlet of hope or whatever right. like, it's gold cups with gems and diamonds yeah, in it yeah. and then now you gotta maintain that mm-hmm. because now if you don't do it then you're like well Floyd what happened to the mm-hmm. what happened to the Bugatti that you had Man. cause even in the video with TMZ he was like but I still got my Bugatti by the way I know mm-hmm. I ain't posted it in a while but I still got it I might post that later so y'all still know I got like yeah. what <laughs> Yeah, you gotta remind us that you still got your car that sounds like somebody yeah, something, reaching something going there yeah. to me 
but I smell a little bit of fish a, too. Sir. I smell a little yes. dead. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I smell. Yes. <laughs> so that I think there's a whole nother side to mm-hmm. that that we can talk about celebrities and their money management. Mm-hmm. But that's how I feel on that. That's my take on that. Interesting, sir. You know what? You you could be on something. I don't know. Niggas look a little funny in the light. <laughs> Him and Jesse out here looking crazy. Oh, Jesse been looking crazy. <laughs> we ain't even going to talk about that. But, yeah, I mean, that's how I feel. So, is there anything anything else? I don't know. I think I'm good. Okay. We have some viewers coming in. I appreciate the viewership. We got some comments. We got some likes. Yes, we got some you. engagement. Shout mm-hmm. out to y'all. Make sure y'all like the page. Yes. Uh, did you hear all the drops in there, too? <laughs> He did, did you that. Hear the drops, nigga. We could be rich. Hey, I'm to tell you. you see the production quality <laughs> hey. coming in over here. Hey, give us All about five drops. years. Hey man, you'll never know. Um, mm-hmm. But like the page, share the video, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, SoundCloud. Download the Simple Radio app and listen to HLX Radio live at any time. I like it. It's progress being made around here. I like it. We are out of here. We thank you for your time. Bye. We got a classic right here.